we all love a good story. But let's also acknowledge that life is one long story. It has beginning, middle, and end. But have you ever thought about the bigger story? The one we're all a part of? It's happening all the time. And we've been invited to play a small role in God's bigger story. A bigger story. That is the series that we've been uh, spending some time together in the book of Ephesians as we've been walking through basically chapter by chapter through the book of Ephesians as we get a sense of the bigger story. You know, it's, it's so easy for us to, to think that life is about me, you know, that, that my world is about me. And Ephesians helps us get a sense of the idea that God is at something much bigger than any one of us, and yet he chooses to allow us to be a part of it. And so in Ephesians, we, we kind of catch on that God planned from the very beginning that he was going to send his son, Jesus, that he, in Jesus, he would reconcile the world to himself, that he would bring us back into a relationship with him. Sin messed all that up, but God had a plan from the beginning. And this is a bigger part. This is a story, the, the part of the, of the bigger story. That is that God is actively involved in our lives, that he loves us enough that he brings us back into relationship with him. And he allows us to be a part of that story, which is pretty exciting when he decides to use us to let people in on what he's doing. This morning, I want us to, uh, to get to Ephesians chapter 4 as we think together about watch your walk. Watch your walk. Doctors tell us that if we get less than 5,000 steps, then we are living sedentary lives. 5,000 steps each day. Now, you know, now that we've got our phones and our fancy little watches, and now they even have rings that do it, and I mean, everybody's counting their, their steps, and, and we, we keep up with that, you know, we're probably, I got this many steps, I got that many steps, and, but dead gum, 5,000? The average American gets 3,000 to 4,000, somewhere in that window a day, which means that the average American is technically living a sedentary, that means you're sitting still too much, life. That's nuts. Almost every day, I get a Facebook ad that it's a way for men to lose weight while walking. You can tell I haven't clicked on that ad yet. <laughs> but I assume the idea is you give us money and we'll motivate you to get in your steps, right? Walk must be pretty important. Moving, being active must mean something. As I was thinking about walk, I noticed that in Scripture, that word is a rich word, and it's actually used a lot in Scripture. The next time you're really looking for a, a, a fun Bible study to do on your own, and you're looking to, to just do something different, uh, get out your Bible app and look up how many verses talk about our walk. I think you'll be surprised. It starts in Genesis when Adam and Eve were in the garden and it said that God would walk by. After that, throughout the Old Testament and then really in the New Testament, we get a sense that walk is not just getting in your steps. In Scripture, walk refers to your lifestyle. It refers to how you live. And that's exactly how Paul uses it here in chapter 4 
as he speaks to the church about our walk. Look at verse 17. Halfway through chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 17. He says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. And understand that in this context, in, in this letter, Gentiles means something different than it does to you and me today. It, it's based on what was happening in history and in that, in that area. Everybody who was a believer so far basically was, was Jewish. And so when they use the term Gentile, the, he's using the term in a sense of non-believers. We would say non-Christians, people who are not a part of the church. All right, so it's, that word means something different in this verse than the way you and I use it. So he says, I, 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 you must no longer walk like the people who are not in the church, who don't believe in Jesus, don't, don't live any longer like those who are unbelievers. They live that way, according to the end of verse 17, in the futility of their minds. We need to begin our discussion this morning by looking at a worldly walk. He says, don't walk like the people of the world do anymore. He says, they do that, they, they walk that way because of the futility of their minds. That, that, that's not an insult. It's not saying that, that lost people are stupid. What he's saying is that they don't understand the truth. Their thinking is off. Some of the most brilliant people I know have chosen not to believe. This is not, a bad, this is not an insult in intelligence. This is saying that their thinking is just off. The way they're thinking is futile, he says. And we could understand that a bit more, perhaps, if we remembered what it said in Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14 uh, says, There is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way to death. He's futile in his thinking. So many people around us day in and day out and flooding our, our social media feeds and flooding our, our entertainment and news media. Uh, the, the thought of the world today is so often futile and because it is, I have my truth, you have your truth. I do my thing, you do your thing. Don't tell me what to believe. I believe what I believe, and you believe what you believe. And when we do that, what we're doing is we are forsaking truth. We're deciding that what I choose to think up is just as valid as everything that anyone else might choose to think up. And when we do that, what we've done is we have taken absolute truth out we've said there is no real truth I just believe what I choose to believe and you believe what you choose to believe it is the futility of their minds look at verse 18 they are darkened in their understanding alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them understand please ignorance again that does not mean an inability to think. It means lack of knowledge. They just don't have the information. They don't know the truth. Alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. Because they have not opened themselves to the truth of God, they do not understand the things of God, and so their walk is a worldly walk. Look at verse 19. They have become callous and have given themselves up to, the, up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. This is, how, this is what that life leads to. Uh, they have given themselves up to sensuality. They, their decisions are based on what feels good, what feels right, maybe. I personally can't remember these days, but some of you remember the 70s. You remember the 70s when everybody was saying, if it feels good, what? 
If it feels good, do it. We don't hear that much anymore, but many still think that way. If it feels good, that must mean it is good, is the pervasive mindset of our culture. If I like it, that must mean it's right for me. If it feels good, is the driving decision maker. And Paul stresses to the church, folks, don't live like that. That, that's the way the, that we used to live. That's the, the worldly walk. You have a different walk. Believers, don't fall back into the, the way of thinking and the way of living that is, that, that is demonstrated by the world. On an Oprah Winfrey show, she had a program with, uh, with women who were having affairs with married men. And when the women were challenged on the morality of adultery, one woman said, wait a minute, I am a Christian, but I want everyone to know that my personal life and my religion don't interfere with one another. I believe in a God who wants me to be happy, and if this man makes me happy, then God approves of the relationship. I don't, my personal life and my religion don't interfere. The preachers of old would say, if there's, if there's no change, there's no Jesus. If your personal life hasn't been affected by your faith, you ain't found Jesus yet. Which takes us to a new walk. Look at verse 20. We consider together a new walk. He says, D leave behind the worldly walk. And then he, he, he challenges us to understand and accept a new walk. Verse 20, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. He, he says, I, leave that behind. Leave your old life behind. You're something new. You have a new life. Don't keep returning to your old life. You, you want to learn to take off and leave off that old life. Earlier this year, I had surgery on my toe and recovery from toe surgery can take a little while. You know, you have to stay off of it completely and then you got to hobble around in that big funny looking boot and then, you know, and then you get the boot off and it still hurts when you walk. And so I, would, I was just limping around forever. Well, eventually that toe healed up enough that it wasn't hurting that bad and yet I just kept limping. And I finally realized the only reason I'm limping is because that's the habit that I got into. That's the way I've walked for so many weeks. I don't really have to do that anymore. And so I started intentionally walking as normal as a fat guy can walk. And so this is what Paul is saying. Your tendency is to go back to your old walk. But leave it. He's made something new in you. Walk in a new walk. Live a new life. And, and, and so he, he says in 22, put off your old self. In 23, he says, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Change that thinking. Remember the worldly walk is based on faulty thinking. Well, then the, the walk that is pleasing to God, the life that is pleasing to God, that is, is established in Christ, that walk has to happen when our minds are renewed. And so we remember Romans chapter 12 at verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed, be changed by the renewal of your mind. Change the way you think so that your life changes, so you can take off the old life, the old walk, and put on 
something new. Look at verse 24. To put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Take off the old and put on the new. That is fitting because we are new people when we come to Christ, when we really trust in him. He makes us new creatures. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You, when you came to Christ, you became a new somebody. Leave the old way of life behind. Live a new way of life, pleasing to him. That is a new walk. And because we have a new walk, we must also learn to cultivate a careful walk. We want to have a careful walk. Look as we continue in verse 25. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear." You see what he's doing? He's saying, leave the worldly walk behind, accept a new walk, a new lifestyle in Christ. Well, how did I do that? What does it look like? Now he's describing that new life. These are the, the ways that you can intentionally, that you can choose to live out a new life that is more pleasing to God. You know, be careful what you say and how you say it. Take care of one another. Love each other. Be honest. Stop stealing stuff. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander, even during election years, be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. There is a careful walk. I'm going to intentionally make these choices, make these decisions to live the new life that God has given me in a way that pleases Him and represents Christ. It is in so doing that I can become a part of this bigger story, that I can play my role, that I can, that I can represent Him to a world who needs to know Him. I get to be a part of the bigger story when I play my role correctly. And my role is to live a new life changed by Him, that is characterized by these very obvious changes that I can see and others can see as well. Again, remember Psalm 1 at verse 1 speaks of this kind of lifestyle choice. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor seats in, sits in the seat of scoffers. This person has chosen a new life. Likewise, Ephesians chapter 4 reminds us, I therefore, this is Paul talking, he says, I'm a prisoner, but I'm a prisoner for the Lord. Remember, he is in, in, in chains when he's writing this. He is in jail when he's writing this. He says, but I'm serving the Lord even in this way. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called walk a new walk, live a new life, all for the glory of Jesus Christ. What would that new life be? It is a walk of love. Let me show you finally the walk of love. Beginning in verse 1, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love 
as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Just as Christ gave his life for us, we now live our lives for him and for others. We leave the worldly walk behind. We allow the Holy Spirit of God to to bring to us a new walk. And then we intentionally, we on purpose, walk that walk that represents Christ. And we do so out of love. If he loved us enough to give his life for us, surely we can love him back enough to live our lives for him.